Good evening and welcome everyone to the Pub Quizzle on this beautiful Tuesday evening with your host, me, Ali B. Welcome back. Another week has passed. Here we are. People are starting to think about going to a real pub uh, after today. So uh, we'll see what happens with the Pub Quizzle, but I'm still here uh, and still happy to be quizzing with you this week. I've got a, a little bit of a, well, it's a little bit of a Union Jack uh, bow tie tonight and some navy specs and some Aldi Prosecco uh, to have with you this evening. So cheers to that. So I don't know how you're playing this evening, if you're playing in teams, if you're playing on your own, however you're playing, we will have six rounds of 15 questions tonight. Uh, first three rounds. Uh, we will then pause after the first half for a break for five minutes and then continue with the second half. Uh, questions from the first half, we will have the answers for at the beginning of the second half so you can see how you're tracking um, and then all the remainder of the answers at the end. So one of the important things, as we always know, is where are you going to play your joker tonight? Because a joker means you can double up on your points for the particular round that you play it on. So instead of 15 points, you have the opportunity to score 30. Okay, so if we bring up the rounds for this evening, round number one tonight is going to be sport and games. Round number two is going to be an airports round. So we have had this once before, but if you're not, if you weren't there that week, uh, this is where I will show you the three letter code for different airports all around the world. And all you have to do is identify the name of the airport. Okay, round three, our audio round this week is going to be quiz show catchphrases. So you'll hear a famous catchphrase from a quiz show and you have to name the title of the show. Then as I say, we'll have our little break, move on to round four, which is as always is potluck. Round five this week is going to be cartoons. So all sorts of cartoons, not just Disney, all sorts of cartoons. And then finally round six, which is our picture round to finish, will be name the film. So you'll see a picture of a famous scene from a film and you have to identify the film title. So have a little look, note down where you might want to play your joker. I will remind you at the start of the round uh, to, to declare if you would like to play your joker. I'll also remind you at half time what the upcoming rounds are. So if you haven't played your joker at that point, you can still do so. All right, but without any further jibber jabber from me, we will get cracking with round one tonight, which is sport and games. So if there are any sports fans out there and they would like to play their joker, please do declare it now and note it down on your piece of paper. So paper and pens at the ready and we will get going tonight with question one, which is who currently holds the world record for the 100 meter sprint? Who currently holds the world record for the 100 meter sprint? And that is men's please, the men's 100 meter sprint. Question number two, which sport is also known as gridiron? Which sport is also known as gridiron? Question number three, winners of which tournament are awarded the green jacket? Winners of which tournament are awarded the green jacket? Number four, on which cricket ground was the first test match played in England? On which cricket ground was the first test match played in England? Question number five, in which card game would you twist? In which card game would you twist?
Question number six. Which athletic event is 3,000 metres in length and requires competitors to jump 28 barriers? So which athletic event is 3,000 metres in length and requires competitors to jump 28 barriers? Question number seven. What is the chess piece, the castle, also known as? What is the chess piece, the castle, also known as? Question number eight. What is a period of play called in polo? What is a period of play called in polo? Question number nine. Which city did Formula One driver Nigel Mansell come from? Which city did Formula One driver Nigel Mansell come from? I should say does. He's still alive. I don't know why I've put the past tense there. Which city does he come from? Question number 10. In which sport is Canadian Wayne Gretzky an all-time great? In which sport is Canadian Wayne Gretzky an all-time great? Okay, now moving on. Question number 11. In a decathlon, what is the first event? So in a decathlon, what is the first event? 10 events in total for those competitors. Which one do they do first? Question number 12. In what game might you hit a Shanghai? In what game might you hit a Shanghai? Question number 13. In one team, how many players are there on court in a game of volleyball? So in just one of the teams, how many players are there on court in a game of volleyball? Question number 14. In which sport might you see a crucifix? In which sport might you see a crucifix? And finally, your last question for the sports round tonight. Question number 15 is, what do you call a left-handed boxer? What do you call a left-handed boxer? All right, and that brings us to the end of the first round. I hope things have started well for you tonight as we move to round two, which is going to be our airports round. So as I said, I'm going to show you the three letter code that you will see uh, on boards in airports to denote the airport that you are flying from or to. You might also find it on your ticket. So all you have to do from that three digit code, three letter code, I should say, is to identify the name and the city of the airport. Uh, in fact, just the city is enough. You don't need to worry about the, uh, the name. OK, so if you would like to play your joker here, uh, please do declare it and we will get started. So airport number one, LGW, LGW. Okay. Question number two, airport two, ATL. 
A-T-L. Which airport is that? Number three, A-K-L, A-K-L, which airport is that? Question number four, M-A-D, which airport has the three letter code M-A-D? Number five, HKG, which airport is HKG? Taking you around the world from your living rooms and gardens. What if you are playing in the garden tonight? It's so lovely. I would, but I always worry about the modem strength, Wi-Fi strength. Number six, AMS, which airport is AMS? Question number seven, ABZ, ABZ. As I always say, always worth a guess with these. Can you work it out from the letters? Even if you're not sure, always worth putting down a city. Question number eight, D-U-B, D-U-B, which city's airport is that? Question number nine, LPL, LPL, which city has that code for its airport? Number 10, ORD, ORD for number 10, which city's airport is that? Number 11, P-E-K, P-E-K. Number 12, C-A-I, which airport has C-A-I as its three letter code? Number 13, G-I-G, -G. which city's airport has G-I-G? as its code. Number 14, Y, Y, Z, Y, Y, Z. Tough this one, that's for sure. A bit of a strange code, that one. Worth a guess. And finally, number 15 of your airports round tonight. P-E-R, which city's airport has the code P-E-R? Okay, so that brings us to the end of that round. 
Hope you noted any down you weren't sure on so you can continue pondering and have a guess before we go through the answers because now we're going to move on to our third uh, third round of the night which is quiz show catchphrases. So I will play you 15 catchphrases from famous quiz shows and all you have to do is identify the title the name of the quiz show itself. So not the presenter, not who's saying it, just the name of the show. Okay, so I will go through them from one to 15, but I will play them twice because they're quite short, as you can imagine. So I'll play each one twice. And then when we get to 15, I'll go back to the top and just play everything once more through for you. They're pretty quick, so I'll give you an extra play. Alrighty, so... Let's have a listen to our first quiz show catchphrase and please identify for me which TV show this is. I'll start it so I'll finish. Okay, we'll hear that once more. I'll start it so I'll finish. Okay, that was number one. Which quiz show was that? So moving on now to question number two, which show is this? It's time to bring on the chaser. Okay, once more. It's time to bring on the chaser. Right. Number three, which quiz show is this? Just say what you see. Say that again. Just say what you see. Okay. Number four, which quiz show is this? Final answer. And again. Final answer. Mm, I wonder which, which quiz show was that? All right, number five. Okay, we'll hear that again. Okay, which quiz show was that? Number six. You don't get anything for a pair, not in this game. Right, once more. You don't get anything for a pair, not in this game. All right. Number seven. This is your first start of the ten. Okay, and again. This is your first start of the ten. Question number eight. Can I have a pin, please, Bob? Okay, and again. Can I have a pin, please, Bob? All right. Which quiz show was that? Number nine. Which show is this from? If it's up there, I'll give you the money myself. All right, and again. If it's up there, I'll give you the money myself. Number 10. Oh, didn't they do well? And once more. Oh, didn't they do well? Number 11. Come on down! And again. Come on down! Number 12. Hello, number one. What's your name and where do you come from? And some once more. Hello, number one. What's your name and where do you come from? Number 13. Iran. <laughs> Say 
Say that again. Iran. <laughs> you remember that one? Number 14. Okay, one big and the rest small, please. And again. Okay, one big and the rest small, please. What was that from? When do they say that? And finally, question number 15, your last quiz show tonight. What was this from? No likey, no lighty. And once more. No likey, no lighty. Okay, so they are your 15. So as promised, I will go back to the top and just quickly run through them all once more. Okay, so if you've missed any, listen out and I'll play them again. So back to number one. Here we go. I've started, so I'll finish. Number two. It's time to bring on the chaser. Number three. Just say what you see. Number four. Final answer. Number five. Jimmy! Number six. You don't get anything for a pair, not in this game. Number seven. This is your first start of the ten. Number eight. Can I have a pin, please, Bob? Number nine. If it's up there, I'll give you the money myself. Number ten. Oh, didn't they do well? Number eleven. Number 12. Hello, number one. What's your name and where do you come from? Number 13. Iran. <laughs> number 14. Hey, one big and the rest small, please. And finally, your last quiz show catchphrase, number 15. What was this from? No likey, no lighty. Okay, and that brings us to the end of our audio round tonight. I hope as your pub quizzle fans, you're also TV quiz show fans as well from over the years. Um, but we now come to the end of our first half. So our first three rounds complete already. So I'll give you now just a five minute break to top up your drinks, go over your answers, make sure you are confident. And then we will come back and go through all of the answers for the first half. Uh, so I will see you very shortly. OK, bye.
and welcome back everyone to the second half of the pub quizzle tonight. I hope your drinks are topped up and you are ready to go with all your answers. I hope the first half wasn't too frustrating. I thought those quiz show catchphrases were quite good. Uh, quite taking you back uh, down memory lane with some of those. Some of the airports a bit tough tonight, but I've got to test you. I hope you've had some guesses in there where you weren't sure. Anyway, Let's go to uh, back to round one, which was our sports and games round. So if you are ready, I will let you know the answer. So the first question was, who currently holds the world record for the 100 meter sprint men's? That is Usain Bolt, Usain Bolt. Number two, which sport is also known as gridiron? That is American football, American football. Question number three, winners of which tournament are awarded the green jacket? That is the US Masters in golf, the US Masters. Question number four, on which cricket ground was the first test match played in England? The Oval, it was the Oval, not Lords, the Oval. Question number five, in which game would you twist? That is pontoon or blackjack? Question number seven, sorry, number six, which athletic event is 3,000 metres in length and requires competitors to jump 28 barriers? That is the steeplechase, the steeplechase. Now number seven, what is the chess piece, the castle, also known as? The rook, the rook. Number eight, what is a period of play called in polo? That is a chucker, a chucker. Number nine, which city does Formula One driver Nigel Mansell come from? Ding, ding, ding. That is your Birmingham question tonight. He grew up in Hall Green, Birmingham. So there we go. Number 10, in which sport is Canadian Wayne Gretzky an all-time great? Ice hockey, of course, in Canada, ice hockey. Number 11, in a decathlon, what is the first event? The 100 metres kicks off the, the decathlon. Number 12, in which game might you hit a Shanghai? That is in darts. That is when you hit a single, a double and a treble on the same number. Question number 13, in one team, how many players are there on court in a game of volleyball? Six players in a team, six players on court in a single team in volleyball. Number 14, in which sport might you see a crucifix? That is in gymnastics, specifically men's gymnastics on the rings. It's when they hold their arms out straight and hold themselves up in the cross shape. And finally, number 15, what do you call a left-handed boxer? A southpaw, a southpaw. Okie doke, so moving on to number two. So this was the airport round. So the city where you would find those airports. So for number one, LGW, that was London Gat Gatwick, but I did say the city. So if you have just put London, that is fine, but that was London Gatwick. Number two, ATL, that is Atlanta. Number three was AKL, which is Auckland in New Zealand, AKL, Auckland. Number four, MAD, is Madrid, Madrid. Number five, HKG, is Hong Kong, Hong Kong. Number six, AMS, Amsterdam, Amsterdam. Number seven, ABZ, that is Aberdeen up in Scotland. ABZ is Aberdeen. Number eight, DUB, is Dublin. Dublin. Number nine, LPL, is Liverpool. Number 10, ORD, very difficult one, this. Chicago, you had to know that one, not really guessable. ORD was Chicago. Number 11, PEK, is Beijing from its former name Peking there. So Beijing, the answer for number 11. Number 12, C-A-I is Cairo, Cairo. First three letters, but could you think of a city beginning with C-A-I? That's the question. Number 13, another difficult one, G-I-G. That is Rio de Janeiro. So Rio is G-I-G. Uh, number 14, the other really difficult one tonight, YYZ. That is Toronto in Canada. Another one, if you knew it, if you know your North American airports from traveling. And finally, P-E-R, 
is Perth, Perth, Australia. So a bit of an easier one to finish. All right, so now moving on to our audio round. So these quiz show catchphrases, sometimes it was the host, sometimes it was the actual contestant that said it. So number one, I've started, so I'll finish. That is Mastermind. Of course, Magnus Magnuson making that one famous. Uh, number two, or did Bamba Gascoigne say it as well? I don't know. Anyway, Mastermind. Number two, let's bring on the chaser. Bit of a giveaway in the catchphrase. That is the chase. Number three, just say what you see. That was catchphrase, Roy Walker's famous phrase on catchphrase. Number four, final answer. Of course, who wants to be a millionaire? Number five, in eight, was from Bullseye when they went, went round the board with Bully for all the different prizes. Number six, you don't get anything for a pair, not in this game. Play your cards right. Play your cards right with Bruce Forsyth. Number seven, your starter for 10. That is, of course, University Challenge, the first question that they ask for 10 points. Number eight, I'll have a pee, please, Bob. That was from Blockbusters, Blockbusters. Number nine, if it's up there, I'll give you the money myself. That was Family Fortunes, one of Les Dennis's catchphrases on there. Number 10, didn't they do well? The Generation Game, another Bruce Forsyth quiz show. Number 11, come on down. Brucey again with The Price is Right. He was on a lot of quiz shows. Uh, number 12, what's your name and where'd you come from? Blind Date with Scylla. Number 13, Iranu Uvavu from Shooting Stars with Vic and Bob, celebrity game show there. Number 14, one from the top and any other five? Countdown, of course, in the numbers round when they were selecting the numbers that they wanted to play. And finally, no likey, no lati is Take Me Out. Take Me Out with Paddy McGuinness. Okay, so they are your first three rounds, all the answers there. Hope you're doing all right. Hope you're tracking okay there. But let's get back to our questions for the second half. So round four, as always, is going to be potluck. But if you haven't played your joker yet, the remaining rounds, as a reminder, are potluck for round four, cartoons for round five, and name the film for the picture round in round six, our last round tonight. Okay, so if you're a potluck fan, a random facts fan, and you would like to play your joker here, please do so declare, otherwise we will get started with our second round. So question number one, which planet is known as the red planet? Which, excuse me, which planet is known as the red planet? Question number two, what is the chemical symbol for magnesium? What is the chemical symbol for magnesium? Are we going to run out of elements anytime soon? No, I mean, obviously not. It's quite a lot, but. We've had 13 weeks, 13 different elements. Number three, what is the name of the underpaid clerk of Ebenezer Scrooge in Charles Dickens' A Christmas Carol? What is the name of the underpaid clerk of Ebenezer Scrooge in Charles Dickens' A Christmas Carol. Let's not talk about Christmas just yet. Still got six months to go there, though. First half of the year screaming to an end. Question four, what is the name of the pilgrimage to Mecca in Islam? What is the name of the pilgrimage to Mecca in Islam? Question number five, who was the first British monarch to voluntarily abdicate the throne? Who was the first British monarch to voluntarily abdicate the throne? Number six, 
Who is famed for saying, I did everything Fred did, but backwards and in high heels? Who is famed for saying, I did everything Fred did, but backwards and in high heels? It's one of my favourite famous quotes there from a celebrity. Question number seven. What is the largest living species of penguin? What is the largest living species of penguin? I say, I say living there, I don't know. Were they prehistoric penguins? I don't know. But anyway, largest living species. Question number eight. How many revolutions does a seven inch record make per minute? How many revolutions does a seven inch record make per minute? Number nine. What is the name of the first aid procedure that involves abdominal thrusts and is used to treat upper airway obstructions? What is the name of the first aid procedure that involves abdominal thrusts and is used to treat upper airway obstructions? Number 10. Two Jags was the nickname for which British politician? Two Jags was the nickname for which British politician? Moving on to number 11. Whose autobiography is entitled Long Walk to Freedom, whose autobiography is entitled Long Walk to Freedom. Number 12. Occurring twice yearly, what name is given to a day consisting of 12 hours of daylight and 12 hours of darkness occurring twice yearly. What name is given to a day consisting of 12 hours of daylight and 12 hours of darkness? We did, of course, have the longest day weekend just gone. So the nights will start to draw in gradually, but we have many weeks of glorious summer before that happens. Before it gets too dark. Number 13. Who was the Greek goddess of wisdom? Who was the Greek goddess of wisdom? Number 14. What was the first item sold on eBay? We've got some choices. Is it A, an old Polaroid camera, B, a classic Coca-Cola bottle, or C, a broken laser pointer? So what was the first item ever sold on eBay? A, an old Polaroid camera, B, a classic Coca-Cola bottle, or C, a broken laser pointer? Do you know? Have a guess. I thought that was a really interesting fact when I read it, which is why it's appeared in the potluck round of the pub quizzle. Question number 15. How is the Latin phrase cogito ergo sum translated into English? How is the Latin phrase cogito ergo sum translated into English? For you Latin scholars out there. We seem to have a little bit of a linguistic flavour in my quizzes. Can't help that. 
All right, that brings us to the end of round four, our pot look around. Moving on now to round number five. So this is our cartoons round, new round. We've had Disney before, but never cartoons more broadly. Uh, so if you'd like to play your Joker here, they are cartoons from across the decade. So not just current, if that helps on your Joker choice. All right, so if we're ready, number one. What did Popeye eat to give him his strength? What did Popeye eat to give him his strength? Number two, what are the names of Bart Simpson's two sisters? What are the names of Bart Simpson's two sisters? You get half a point for, for each here. So if you know one, you'll still get half a point. Question number three. What were Lady and the Tramp eating in the famous restaurant scene? What were Lady and the Tramp eating in the famous restaurant scene? Question number four. What is the name of the dog in the series Peanuts? What is the name of the dog in the series Peanuts? Question number five. What is the name of Scooby-Doo's nephew? What is the name of Scooby-Doo's nephew? Question number six, who lives in Bedrock? Number six, who lives in Bedrock? Question number seven. What was the surname of George, Jane, Judy and Elroy, the cartoon family from the future? What was the surname of George, Jane, Judy and Elroy, the cartoon family from the future? I still have the theme tune to this one. I won't sing it because it gives away the answer. Number eight, what does the Lion King character Rafiki's name translate to in English? What does the Lion King character Rafiki's name translate to in English? So Rafiki is a Swahili word. Again, here another little linguistic -y question here, but what does it translate to in English? Have a guess. If you, if you don't know it, think about his character. Think about what he did. Have a guess. Number nine. Which pop group refused to play the roles of the vultures in Disney's The Jungle Book? Which pop group refused to play the roles of the vultures in Disney's The Jungle Book? Number 10, which cartoon character's full first name is Minerva? Which cartoon character's full first name is Minerva? Do you know? Can you work it out? Question number 11. Who are Blossom, Bubbles and Buttercup? Who are Blossom, Bubbles and Buttercup? What are they known as collectively? collectively? Number 12. 
Number 12, what was Bugs Bunny's catchphrase? What was Bugs Bunny's catchphrase? Number 13, Little April Shower is a song in which animated Disney film? Little April Shower is a song in which animated Disney film? Question number 14. Which amorous skunk cartoon character is unaware that he smells bad? Which amorous skunk cartoon character is unaware that he smells bad? And finally, question number 15 for your cartoons round is, in Inside Out, the feelings in Riley's head are joy, sadness, fear, disgust, and which other? So in the Disney Pixar film Inside Out, the feelings in Riley's head are joy, sadness, fear, disgust, and which other? I've been told a few times if I dyed my hair blue, more a green dress, I'd be a little bit like Joy from Inside Out. I don't know if I'm always joyful like she is. Fairly positive generally, I guess. Anyway, that brings us to the end of round five. So we only have one left, my friends, already come to the end of the pub quizzle. So round six, this is your pictures round tonight. So uh, it is name the film. There will be some visual clues, some scenes from famous films, famous scenes from famous films. And all you have to do is identify the title of the film. So not the character that you can see, but the title of the film. As always, I have broken these down into three sets of five. You will have two minutes for each set of five. I'll give you a 30 second warning. And then after those two minutes, we will move on to the next set and we will not return. So be sure to look carefully. All right, so I will get my timer ready. And these are your first five picks. Thirty seconds, thirty seconds. Five seconds to go here. Three, two, 
one. Here's your second set. Thirty seconds, everyone. Five seconds on these five, three, two. One, and here's your final set. Thirty seconds, everyone. Five seconds. Three. Two, one, and that is the end of your picture round and your pub quizzle this evening. So, how were those films? I hope you recognised a majority of them at least. So, where are you going to come tonight on the ladder of quizzing bragging rights? Have you levelled up? How are you, how are you averaging over these many many weeks? Are you always falling in the same bracket or have you been fluctuating? Anyway, let's see as we have a look at our answers. So let me just bring the questions back up in front of me so I can take you through the answers tonight for our second half. Okay, 
So if we go back to round four, which was our potluck round, question number one was which planet is known as the red planet? And that is Mars. Mars is the red planet. Number two, which, which chemical... Uh, sorry, which is what is the chemical symbol for magnesium? That is MG, MG. Number three, the name of the underpaid clerk uh, that worked for Ebenezer Scrooge in A Christmas Carol is Bob Cratchit, Bob Cratchit, father of Tiny Tim. Number four, what is the name of the pilgrimage to Mecca in Islam? That is Hajj, Hajj. Number five, what was the name of the first British monarch to voluntarily abdicate the throne. That was Edward VIII when he wanted to marry divorcee Wallace Simpson. Number six, who is famed for saying, I did everything Fred did, but backwards and in high heels? Ginger Rogers, legend. I love her. Number seven, what is the largest living species of penguin? There's the emperor penguin, the emperor penguin. Number eight, how many revolutions does a seven inch record make per minute? 45, all your 45 records. Number nine, what is the name of the first aid procedure that involves abdominal thrusts and is used to treat upper airway obstructions? The Heimlich maneuver, the Heimlich maneuver. Number 10, Two Jags was the nickname for John Prescott, John Prescott. Number 11, whose autobiography is entitled Long Walk to Freedom? That is Nelson Mandela, Nelson Mandela. Number 12, occurring twice yearly, what's the name given to a day consisting of 12 hours of light and 12 hours of darkness? An equinox, an equinox. Number 13, who was the Greek goddess of wisdom? Athena. Athena was the Greek goddess of wisdom. Her Roman counterpart was Minerva. Number 14, what was the first item sold on eBay? You had a choice there and the answer was C, the broken laser pointer, apparently. So there we go. Somebody bought that as the first purchase on eBay. And number 15, the Latin phrase cogito ergo sum is translated into English as I think, therefore I am. All right. So they were your potluck questions tonight. Number five, round five was the cartoons round. So number one, what did Popeye eat to give him his strength? That is spinach, spinach. Number two, the names of Bart Simpson's two sisters. So half a point for each, Lisa and Maggie, Lisa Simpson and Maggie Simpson. Number three, what were Lady and the Tramp eating in the famous restaurant scene? Spaghetti, spaghetti bolognese. Number four, what is the name of the dog in the series Peanuts? That is Snoopy. Snoopy was in Peanuts. Number five, what is the name of Scooby-Doo's nephew, another dog? Scrappy-Doo, Scrappy-Doo. Number six, who lives in Bedrock? That is the Flintstones, or I will accept Fred Flintstone as well. Number seven, what was the surname of George, Jane, Judy and Elroy, the cartoon family from the future? They were the Jetsons, so Jetson was their surname. Number eight, what does the Lion King character Rafiki's name translate to in English? Friend Rafiki is Swahili for friend. Number nine, which pop group refused to play the roles of the vultures in Disney's The Jungle Book? Do you remember they used to say, what are we going to do in a Scouse accent? The Beatles, they did actually ask them if they would play the voices. They said no, but they were the inspiration. Anyway, number 10, which cartoon character's first name is Minerva in full? Minnie Mouse, she is Minerva Mouse. Number 11, who are Blossom, Bubbles and Buttercup? They are the Powerpuff Girls, the Powerpuff Girls. Number 12, what was Bugs Bunny's catchphrase? He used to say, what's up, Doc? What's up, Doc? Number 13, Little April Shower is a song in Bambi. It is a song in Bambi. Number 14, which amorous skunk is unaware that he smells bad? That is Pepe Le Pew, Pepe Le Pew. And finally, number 15 in Inside Out, the feelings in Riley's head 
are joy, sadness, fear, disgust, and anger. Anger. Okay, so moving on now to your picture around the famous films from the visual clue from that scene from the film. Number one was Alice in Wonderland. Number two, American Beauty. Number three, Love Actually. Number four, Legally Blonde. Number five, Scream. Number six, E.T. Number seven, Pulp Fiction. Number eight, Get Out. Number nine, Breakfast at Tiffany's. Number 10, The Princess Bride. That's the As You Wish scene, that was there. Number 11, The Truman Show, where he realises that he's in that uh, big bubble. Number 12, The Shining. Number 13, Moonlight. Number 14, The Godfather. And your final question tonight, number 15, Shawshank Redemption. They were all looking through the hole where Andy Dufresne escaped from the prison there. Okay, so how did you all get on? I hope you did okay, as that brings us to the end of our quiz tonight. Thank you, everyone. Thanks for coming along tonight. I know it's a beautiful evening, so I'm glad that you came along. We had about 45 people dialing in today, playing with 45 teams or single logins. So thanks to everyone for still coming along. I'll carry on for the next few weeks. We'll see how many people continue to come. If you're keen, please let me know, show some support. Uh, and I'll keep doing it for as long as you want to come along to the quizzle. So thanks, everyone. Have a great evening. As per a Zoom or a Hangout meeting, I'm saying goodbye. So I got a wave. All right. See everyone. See you soon. Bye bye.